During a conference call with analysts and retail investors, Elon Musk said, One of the things that troubles me the most is that we, we don't yet have a truly affordable car. This is also one of the main reasons why Texans are hesitant to buy a Tesla. However, that's just the beginning of a series of issues Texans face when buying electric cars in their own state. Let's talk about them and explore the absurdity of these problems that the citizens of Texas must endure in order to even think about owning a Tesla as well as other EVs from other automakers. But before we start, please show your support by subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell so you won't miss any of our interesting videos in the future. Now without any further delays, let's get started on today's episode. Gail Butterf, an instructional assistant professor at the Hobby School of Public Affairs, conducted a survey in which the result found that few Texans currently own or lease an EV, and only about 1 in 10 say they would very likely consider owning or leasing one in the future. Moreover, according to a report, Electric vehicles represent less than 1% of all registered vehicles in the state of Texas. Residents of Texas are still hesitant to buy EVs because they worry about the overall costs of owning one. As of today, EVs are much more expensive than a conventional petrol car. The main reason is due to the battery. Currently, the price of EV batteries is still expensive because of the components inside them. An EV uses the same rechargeable lithium-ion batteries that power your laptop or mobile devices, just much bigger. They consist of cells grouped in packs to enable the delivery of far more energy. The priciest component in each battery cell is the cathode, one of two electrodes that store and release electricity. The materials needed for cathodes to pack in more energy are often expensive, such as metals like cobalt, nickel, lithium, and manganese. They need to be extracted, processed, and converted into highly pure chemical compounds. Prices of nickel, lithium, and cobalt, which are vital raw materials for battery manufacturing, were already rising because of global demand. The prices of these metals, which are required in a 60 kilowatt hour battery that is enough for a large family sports utility vehicle, has risen from 1,395 US dollars last year to more than $7,400 in early March of 2022. Significantly, cobalt prices have increased by 12% since the beginning of the year after more than doubling during 2021. Nickel prices hit a high of $101,365 per ton on the 8th of March, an astronomical increase of 111% during that day's Asian trading hours. Next, another problem that deters Texans from buying electric cars is the fees associated with purchasing and owning one. As per some sources, Texas lawmakers were actively considering the implementation of Senate Bill 1728 that could charge electric car owners a minimum of $200 to $250 per year. Additionally, for those who drive over 9,000 miles, which would likely be most drivers, an additional fee of at least $190 could apply. The proposed Texas Senate Bill 1728 aims to increase fees for EV owners to make up for the gas tax they're not paying. The fees will be assessed to some 300,000 EVs, which would raise nearly $40 million for use by the Texas State Highway Fund in 2022. Texas is not the first state to look at charging EV drivers a fee as a replacement for gas taxes, but its number appear out of line with the gas tax most people pay. Accordingly, a report shows that the average national annual gas tax for a light-duty vehicle is $73. This report also found 20 states that have some sort of EV registration fee with prices ranging from $100 to $200. Another reason why Texans are not really interested in electric cars is that electric vehicle charging infrastructure has not seen much investment. According to statistical data, the number of public charging stations in the state of Texas as of the beginning of 2022 is 5,054, which is much lower than that of California, which is currently at 34,775 stations. 
Not only that, the procedure to buy an EV in Texas is much more complicated than in other states. Now, get this, it's been a hot topic for the past few weeks now. Texans wanting to get their hands on a Tesla can order one on the company's website, but they won't be able to place an order in any of Tesla's Texas-based facilities. Residents have to drive to other states just to buy their Tesla or have the paperwork sent to another state for processing. The car is then shipped to one of Tesla's service centers in the state where the buyer can pick it up. Meanwhile, other states still allow Tesla to sell cars directly to the customer. Washington, Minnesota, Arizona, Indiana, Michigan, and so on. Well, now that we've gone over the problems, let's talk about some solutions that could be explored further in order to reduce the prices specifically for Tesla's models. A major focus for manufacturers is on the priciest commodities, and particularly cobalt. One option is to substitute the metal with nickel, which is cheaper and holds more energy. Doing so requires safety adjustments, however, as cobalt's advantage is that it doesn't overheat or catch fire easily. Another move has been to use alternatives that don't contain cobalt at all, like low-cost lithium iron phosphate cells, once derided for poorer performance, has recently seen a revival as design changes deliver improvements. Simpler battery pack designing and using a standard product for a range of vehicles rather than a package tailored to each model will deliver additional savings. Tesla confirmed that nearly half of all its vehicles produced last quarter are already using cobalt-free iron phosphate batteries. The information also gives us an interesting insight into Tesla's mix of models. Over the last few years, Tesla's CEO Elon Musk has said multiple times that Tesla plans to shift more electric cars to lithium iron phosphate batteries in order to overcome nickel and cobalt supply concerns. Lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries, which don't use nickel or cobalt, are traditionally cheaper and safer but they offer less energy density, which means less efficiency and shorter range for EVs. Fortunately, they have improved enough recently that it now makes sense to use cobalt-free batteries in lower end and shorter range vehicles. Tesla already moved its standard range Model 3 and Y, which are produced at Giga Shanghai, to LFP cells. And with that, we have come to the end of today's episode. We sincerely thank you for watching today's video and for all of your support of our channel, Tesla Car World. As always, if you enjoyed our video, please don't forget to leave a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs. Once again, we thank you so much from all of us here. We hope to see you again next time. Until then, take care and be safe.